here at Vox Day Zurich, I'm with Martin Thompson, the keynote speaker. So you gave a really cool keynote, Engineering You, mm. about uh, a practical approach to software development, learning mm. from different disciplines. Mm -hmm. uh, so what are some, you mentioned in the keynote, a quote from 1968. Mm. So is your point that we, as software developers, need to look back at different industries like engineering in order to refine our own practices? I think we're just like many of the practices gone before us, we're not learning from the past ourselves. So we were discovering things again, like iterative development pointed out in the 1960s. So test-driven development pointed out in the 1960s. That was some of what I was trying to show today. It's not a new... It's not new no. at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it does seem a bit like, we, on that subject, that we do mm. have constantly new uh, concepts that actually have already existed, like functional programming mm -hmm. isn't actually a new. Thing. It's just maybe been rebranded. Uh, but your point, I think, about revisiting is really good. Mm. You do mention in the keynote uh, something about emails and mm -hmm. approach to emails and approach to code that I, in particular, f found mm. really useful because I'm not a classically trained software developer. Mm. I came in uh, by getting a job that was no experience required. Yeah. So some of the fundamentals that you talk about. Uh, could you explain the email analogy? Sure. So I talk about the fundamentals of design, but also fundamentals of our behaviors and practices. So the example with the email thing is, is we work a lot from short-term memory. And if your short-term memory is loaded up with all the things you want to put into an email, you write that email, you reread it straight away, you're actually reading from your short-term memory, not what's on the page, not what's on the screen in front of you. So it's what you thought you wrote. It's what you thought you wrote <laughs> rather than what you did write. So leave it a while, go off, do something else, maybe even the next day, come back, reread it again, and you'll read what's truly there, not what's just in your short-term memory that you think you've written. And it's the same with code. So we write some code, we go off and do something else, we come back again, we'll see things that we didn't see first time. You'll see the bugs, the mistakes, the silly little things that are just so obvious on the revisit that you don't see the first time. And so that really helps with getting our quality to be much better. So as well as the, the fundamentals of, mm. of being a good software mm. craftsperson, mm. Uh, you also talk about some of the fundamentals that you should learn that transcend languages. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, lots of those sort of things like coupling, cohesion, separation of concerns. In many ways, all sound like big words, but are actually quite simple, but we need to practice them much more often. So a lot of them relate to how tangled our code is. We can all kind of relate to code being tangled up, but what does that mean? Like two things couple together a little bit too much. If we untangle them, it makes it easier to work with, easier to understand, makes the surface area of what we're working with much simpler. But there's some fundamental theory behind that. And it's good to go back and revisit that and practice it. Like just even Google for coupling and see how many, how many types of coupling there are. There are many. There's even specialized within some fields like within object orientation. Kinesis is a special form of coupling that fits to object orientation. Just a little bit of Googling will sort of point out a lot of these things and you can start to see. So let's give a simple example. You want to pass a customer object from one system to another, but all you actually want is the customer ID. Is it a good idea to pass the whole object? Because now you're coupled to the whole object. Mm. Just pass the ID. Now you're only coupled to that. The rest can change. So, so we're always changing software, so let's minimize the impact of the change. Quite often, coupling is one of the best ways of achieving that. Keep coupling low. So. When you talk about the fundamentals then, mm. just, you're, what you're suggesting is that rather than constantly keeping on top of technologies and mm. new things coming in, it's a good idea as a, as a mm. software engineer to step back and look at the fundamentals, revisit them, mm. and that's how you refine your code more than looking at the latest addition to Jenkins or the latest mm -hmm. release of Scala. Or, yeah. So those things are useful, sort of keeping up with technology, it's moving all the time. I'm not saying don't do that, but let's just get the balance and look at some of the things that are important. We'll get excited about picking up the new version of Jenkins. Well, I'm not quite sure why you get excited about the new version of Jenkins. I might get a little bit more excited about the new version of Scala, depends on how you're, you're inclined. But, so that's useful, but what's much more important is like, do you think day in, day out, is my code got nice separation of concerns. Is this module or this component cohesive? Have I got coupling between classes, modules, functions, whatever they happen to be? It shouldn't be there. 
those sorts of fundamentals are much more important to practice until it becomes such a natural instinct that we almost don't need to think about it. But it only becomes reflexive if you drill it all the time until it becomes reflexive. You see it in other disciplines that like you've heard of that it takes 10,000 hours to become an expert in anything. I, I love people who do programming who've also done things like music or sports or something that's taken them a long time to get good at it. You go through the whole period of not being so good, you refine over time, but you refine by practice and drilling and you practice the fundamentals. Then you become really good. We don't get enough practice of the fundamentals in software to become really good at it as an industry typically for people.